Hey YouTube, Don here from Music in the Making. I wanted to make a video about uh, how I'm doing my process for drums. Uh, I am in my recording period for doing my EP that's coming out this July, and um, I made a video earlier kind of about some of the options uh, that you've got with a Superior Drummer. Go check that video out. But I wanted to show you kind of what um, I'm doing, what I've decided to do for how I'm going to quote unquote record the drums so that I can mix them later. So the nice thing in Superior Drummer and I think probably even Easy Drums has this is there's a way to bounce um, the tracks. So over here in track, you can go to export song as audio files and you can choose to uh, if you want 24 or 16, but you can do this enable bounce loop area, which is why I have the, the, the blue area here above. So normally you'd use that for looping, but uh, that allows you kind of like you, how you set your locators in Cubase uh, for what you want to um, export out when you're done. Same sort of concept. So the nice thing here is you can um, choose what selected track. So I only have one track in here, so that's why it's set to that. But in the advanced tab, you can do um, bounce each output channel as a separate file. So what that would do is in the mixer, they're currently most, pretty much all the presets that I've seen so far have one output. output. So then um, kind of how that works is you've got your um, mics and user mics are routed to a, uh, a bus and then those buses are all routed to in, in this particular case, they're all routed to the kit bus, and then that's routed to out one and two, and they have another compression track that is routed to uh, out one and two. So um, kind of with like how this is playing here, so um, you can see all these buses are set up, and um, this uh, kit, so like if I solo this, you're hearing the drums, um, but if I were to solo just the kick, so it works. It works just like a regular uh, Dawes uh, mixer, essentially. But if we want to, um, if you want to just get a stereo pair of, of everything, then um, good for you. If you do, if you do all your mixing in here and you want to mix it down to just a stereo track. Um, then you can do that and you won't have to do anything extra than just bounce each output channel as a separate file so that would be just this one uh, thing and then that would be all you'd have to do so um, and then you would just get a stereo track like one track that is the whole drum set so um, what I've decided to do is basically I, I want to be able to mix later like you would mix it regularly. So I'm viewing this process here as the recording process of the drums, like get it. Um, if you guys ever watch Joe Gilder, he says, get it right at the source. Um, so that's basically how I'm treating this portion uh, of the process is mixing this in such a way that I like the sound of the drums and um, I feel like I can use them, you know, they're good stand, standing by themselves, and I can then mix and do very small tweaks uh, in Cubase later. So that's how I'm treating this as basically like recording day, getting good sounds, and then, you know, printing those. So what I want to be able to do is not just have a stereo track. I want to be able to go back later and get, um, you know, like the kick and the snare and the toms and the cymbals, basically how they've got these buses right now. So what I've kind of determined is that um, the easiest way right now is uh, what I did on my song last night was basically you just route this to um, its own output. So not another bus, but an output up here. So this... Uh, I, I like this, it's actually, I'm not, it's not metal, but I like the sound of this gent style. Um, it's under the metal heavy rock. I really like how the kick uh, 
and snare sound on this kit. So um, anyway, so how they've got it structured up as the preset is all of these are bus to one kit thing and then that's bus to here. Where that can become a problem is um, the reason why I like the sound is they've got, you know, all this EQ and compression and stuff on the individual tracks. So normally what I did like last night was you go kit, you just route that to out one and two, you go this to three and four, so on and so on. And then you just kind of like rename these. So this would be kick, this would be snare, and then toms, you get the idea. Um, so, and then the only problem is it, since I'm not routing these to the kick, to the kit, uh, bus anymore, if I were to, you know, go through this whole thing, then I'm not going to get the EQ and compression that was on that bus track. And the same thing with, uh, like this other, um, comp track was getting mixed into this was, um, output one and two. So I'm not going to get these uh, things, which is kind of where um, I'm at is like thinking that the compression and stuff that they're doing on the kit is what I'm going to be doing on my drums uh, in Cubase. It's called a group track, but in other ones would be like called an aux or uh, in Pro Tools. So um, basically any anytime you're summing a bunch of channels into one thing, so like your drum bus is essentially what this uh, is functioning as so I don't really mind not having you can see they're not doing a whole lot they're not they're only taking out a little bit of the uh, mids there and then compression wise looks like they've got um, two to one ratio so they're not doing a whole lot on this uh, track here um, and uh, so it looks like it has a send of this thing going to a, a um, ascend going to this comp track, and then this is probably doing more severe uh, compression. Um, play a little bit here and see what it's doing. So, like, yeah, it's doing, you know, minus five, maybe even six or seven dB reduction, but they're mixing that in. Um, so you can kind of see here that they're mixing that into the overall sound. So like if I just solo this, um, let me actually get rid of the bass here so you can hear that better. I was mixing it to the bass earlier to make sure I knew where I was in the song without having to hear everything. So, um, so they're kind of, they got, that's lower in the mix. Um, Whereas this is like what the regular sound is, and then when you add this in, you can see it's not doing a ton, um, but uh, so you can even hear now that <clears throat> it sounds different than if I um, sent that to Kit. This is what it was doing before, Kit, Kit. And everything was going to that so that's what it, it sounded like before I did anything so if I when I start routing this to um, kick directly snare directly toms then I'm starting to lose um, some of that compression sound so I just call these overheads it's the same thing um, and then ambience be 9 and 10 and ambience in superior drum is think of them as just as room mics um, so then these are essentially being there's uh, I'm actually not sure how that's still getting a signal something being routed how is something something has to else be going to kit why am I not seeing it kit oh so what is this let's go back to ah that's what's happening 
So this one, so there's a user mic that is ha has a kick on it. That's the only other thing that's being sent to that right now. So that's why that one's getting level. So if I mute this, I guess mute doesn't actually. There we go. So yeah. So not that's that was the only thing that was going to this. It must be probably like a like a sampled uh, kick sound. I'm guessing. Yeah, okay, I see. That does sound a little bit weaker, so I'll probably want to make sure that this goes to the kick bus as well. So if I... There, now that sounds beefy again. So that was, yeah, in a regular normal sense, this would probably be a triggered sample of um, a kick that's given it that weight um, so that EQ and compression is getting... Um, so I'm kind of like... This is where it gets a little tricky. You got to make sure you still get the why you liked it, um, why you like the sound to get into your outputs um, that you set up and still get that um, those good sounds. So that that was a big thing. That's I'm glad that I'm che I checked that because if I didn't have that going there, that kick almost sounds really f fake, almost like MIDI. Um, and granted, this is all mini, but um, so now it's got a nice beefy with that uh, beater attack on it. So, and then probably should do the same thing to see if, so none of these are getting, so this isn't getting signal anymore, so then nothing is being routed to this. So we should be all right. This is getting routed to kick, which is this. Kick, kick, snare, snare, kick. So there's probably, all of these user mics are probably, I'll just see this, um, all these user mics are probably like triggered snares in a normal scenario. So I'll get rid of those. And I, um, I don't want to, another choice uh, in, the, in the track uh, bounce option was to bounce each microphone channel pre-mixer. So that would be like bouncing everything without the levels, which I might play with at some point, but um, I I want to get it cl have the blend there um, kind of inherently, so I I'm making less work for myself when I get to the mixing stage. So um, so each one of these uh, so basically what I'm going to kind of do is I'm going to make a note to myself that they had some EQ and compression. They did some parallel compression with this comp track and kind of did, I've heard some people refer to it as a squash track. Um, but basically they did some, some parallel compression on the drums bus uh, where they did more heavy compression, but kind of just mixed it in. And then the only other thing they did here was dip out some of the mids and do some light compression um, on, on the actual like original drum bus so that's not too much for me to worry about when I get to um, mixing later so the fact that I like how this sounds now I mean it's good to check um, once you have everything routed to make sure that this is sounding okay I could go even further with this and like route you know how kick in kick out kick sub and all that kind of stuff but then I'm about bypassing a, they've got a lot of stuff on these buses and that would like if I turn this off and listen to the kick granted that's not actually changing that much but I bet you that's because of this user mic is driving a lot of the sound so same similar sort of thing if I probably bypass the EQ on the kick yeah, that sounds different. So they're probably doing, um, yeah, they're kind of, so by pulling out this information, it's kind of sounds like you're boosting the top end a little bit. And then on this one, yeah, they're booting, boosting, what would that be? 16. So that's kind of w roughly where the like beater head uh, sound is. So that's makes sense why. you're getting that so um, 
But anyway, so this is kind of my process. Um, so basically now I can go to, let me stop the track here. So I can go to export song as audio, go to advanced, bounce each output channel as a separate file. So I got kick, snare, tom, overheads, and room, which, um, you know, sometimes maybe further down the line, I might do the toms individually or get the, you know, kick in, kick out, snare, top, bottom, those kind of things. Um, and then uh, this part, force enable bleed, um, I don't think I want to do that. I, I actually am probably going to play around with that a little bit more to hear exactly what that's doing. But um, so th what it's basically saying is bounce all bleed that is not enabled. So um, there is bleed enabled up here. Um, you can see it's usually mainly on the mics uh, channels. So if I get rid of these guys, um, you can choose how much bleed. So you can see these are not enabled for the kick, kick in, out, sub, snare, top, bottom, hi-hat. Most of these do not have bleed. However, the overhead uh, condenser mic uh, for the cymbals does, and all of the ambience tracks have it to some degree. So, um, if you like bleed in all the tracks, then by all means go ahead and do that. But I, I don't think I'm going to force enable the bleed, um, because I have it sounding the way that I like it and it's not enabled on all the tracks. So I'm going to not do that. Um, and then I don't feel the need to bounce, um, microphones into right and left mono tracks because a lot of when you record drums in real life, you will have uh, probably be stereo miking it. Um, or, I mean, you could have make, have two different tracks as left and right, but a lot of them are doing, you're, you're really just mixing it to a stereo track. But anyway, um, so this is the route that I'm going to go bounce each output channel as a separate file. So that'll be... Um, Basically, again, everything in the mics tracks um, and user mics is getting sent to a bus. Those buses are then routed to a uh, output. It, it is a kind of an extra step, but um, I think it's going to be worth it later to uh, have the individual tracks that I can mix if I want more kick, less snare, that kind of thing. So. Anyway, just wanted to cue you in on to my process that I'm going to be doing for drums. Um, theoretically, you could, I, I know with um, other MIDI stuff, you can, you can uh, mix down the parts into audio tracks. So it's a similar sort of idea of get it the way, get it sounding how you like it, and then commit to that in the quote-unquote recording phase. Again, we don't have a real drum set, but that's, what, that's the phase that I'm on. Um, so get it sounding the way you want it, commit that, print the track, and then, and then, because the, the temptation with MIDI is to leave it in this the whole time so I can go in and tweak everything. Um, you can't do that in a regular scenario where you're, um, you have a tracking day. You only have so much time, you get it right then, and you commit to it. So I'm kind of doing that sort of mentality. And yeah, so... Let me know what you guys think about this process, if I'm, if I'm crazy or what. But uh, yeah, uh, if you like this video, like and subscribe. And in the meantime, uh, go make some music and I'll catch you guys later.